Hello, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Candidates. My name is Curtis Familia, and I'll be your host for today. And I am joined by a candidate for the city upcoming first ward city council race for the city of Flint, uh, Mrs. Anita L. Brown. Mrs. Brown, thank you for coming in and talking with us. You're welcome. Thanks for the inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So I thought to start, you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for First Ward City Council. Well, my name is Anita L. Brown. I'm a 48-year resident of the City of Flint First Ward. I'm a mother of four, the grandmother of six. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm, I'm running for the first one. I'm a little nervous, so it's going to go a little bit with me right there. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why I'm running is to bring the pride back to the first ward, the mm -hmm. hope, the love, to help the ward um, and the people, the residents of that ward to start to believe in, the, um, in local government. And to assure with my presence, you know, um, that they can believe firmly that I possess the governmental background, the education and the grassroots experience mm -hmm. to be an effective leader mm -hmm. for the residents of that ward, as well as a spokesperson that the residents can believe in. You were talking a little bit about some of your background, grassroots, educational. Would you want to go through some of that a little bit with us? Yeah, I'm a 20-year member almost from the former City of Flint Office of the Ombudsman. Okay. I'm certified Michigan State Scientific Analysis Specialist. I'm a certified interviewer and interrogator from the John L. Reed School of Investigation out of Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. I'm a HUD certified counselor um, with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Mm -hmm. And I went to school here in the city of Flint and raised my children. And mm -hmm. I've been here, like I said, for the last 48 years. 48 years, years. wow, that's yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the main issues you would that would be front and center if you took office as city council that you would focus on? Some of the main problems facing the first ward? The water. The water, okay. Crime. Crime. Reducing crime. Uh -huh. Blight. Um, and overall, the, 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 the spirit of the first ward. And what I mean by that is the residents. Mm -hmm. um, you believing and the people, so the police people can believe in you. It's like putting hope back in the people. When you give people hope, they'll help themselves. That's what mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. So overall, just putting the necessary um, ingredients needed to put that war back together. Right, right. Um, so you mentioned water. Yes, sir. Uh, there's been a lot going on, particularly in the news this last week uh, with the debates over where to source uh, Flint's water moving forward. There was the federal judge, you know, requiring that the city council members make a decision about the long-term plans for Flint's water by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, where, where do you stand with all of these debates going on between the Weaver administration and the city council? And what are, what are your thoughts? My thoughts is whether it's G, L, W, A, or mm -hmm. K, W, A, mm -hmm. or another source mm -hmm. is that the water is affordable clean and safe okay and that now and in the future my children as well as others children and grandchildren can afford the water 10 20 even 30 years from now mm -hmm. so it's just about the water being safe and affordable and clean you know the judge pressing the issue, and I, and I have to say this because I believe that, that it's necessary. I am glad that the council members that has taken a stand has done just that. Mm -hmm. Because to lock us in to a 30-year agreement right now with the position that the city is in mm -hmm. financially, um, as far as the position that the water is in, right. and being as high 
and unaffordable as it is right. most of the time for a lot of people, right. you know, um, that it, it's almost impossible if the water that they are talking about as far as the contract right now is on a flex rate, not a fixed rate, but a flex rate where it can be increased um, five to 10% the first five or 10 years right. without anyone having any control of that. I don't agree with that at all. Right. I know today that we pay the highest water bills in the United States and that's ridiculous. Right. So we need to be stable in that area. Right. Um, you, you were also mentioning water affordability. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of residents uh, around when the tax liens went out uh, back in the early summer and midsummer um, the, the liens for the you know um, water payments uh, on their account that a lot of people felt like they shouldn't have to pay for their water bills for some of the periods particularly where the water was at its most poisonous there's been some water credit programs um, what do you feel uh, like you'd say to residents you know wanting some sort of debt forgiveness would you support a program like that yes most definitely because I was one of the residents that was feeling exactly like that as well. Right. Especially when the water was not, where you were not able to cook, actually take a bag, right. a bath. You were being or, advised not to use it. Or not to use it at all, or right. any, other than flushing, right. you know, the toilet, right. and certain stuff like that. Basic, some basic things. Yes, right. and now we have, in, in walking through the neighborhood and campaigning right now, I have a lot of people that come to me or talk to me and discuss different things to me um, about the water right now and they're still not able to pay their water bills and they like Miss Brown why are we even paying for the water and it's still you know not made whole right and I feel the exact same way I think at least the water credit should have stayed a while longer or at least until the water was done right you know this was not a, a, a situation that was created you know right by the people but the people is the one that has to suffer and, right you know so I think that whatever um, whatever can be done to make the people whole it should be right and I definitely we stand and fight for that and being a former member of the office of the ombudsman that would have been something that we would have definitely took on as in a, a, a case or a situation that would have been something that we definitely would have looked into as far as um, you know, the, 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 the situation yeah. with the water. So I would yeah. assume then that you're a big fan of at least that aspect of the new city charter that's trying to kind of reaffirm the ombudsman's office? Most definitely. Yeah. And right now that office is needed more so now than it has ever before mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that office was an avenue for residents to come in and actually voice their concerns um, regarding city departments and city agencies and city employees right. and we were able to give them some resolve one way or the other whether it was something that was in our jurisdiction and we could handle and investigate and bring some kind of resolution or whether it was something that was not in our jurisdiction and we can help them find the right record. people exactly. to be in communication with communication wise See, exactly yeah yeah so that is something that all I am definitely happy and excited that it's being considered to be reopened right right yes yes um, getting back to the water I just have one one more question mm -hmm. on that issue before we move on you were talking about uh, people in your city uh, in your ward I'm sorry still feeling like uh, concerned about the water is I think one of the things you were voicing that it hasn't yet been made whole right I think your words so are you speaking to ongoing issues with the water quality and, and where, do, where do you feel like things are at? Because there's still a lot of disagreement. You know, the governor's office and certain scientists are saying, well, the water's just like any other city in America. I know a lot of people in the community and, and some other ex experts are not so sure. So, so kind of what are your thoughts on, on that issue? I believe this is my exact thought on that issue, that putting a filter on your water faucet, mm -hmm. your shower, be through it, your home, whatever, home filters is a or choice mm -hmm. of the homeowner. For you to be instructed to continue to use filters mm -hmm. until you're not instructed to, uh, it's not whole. Mm -hmm. uh, so until the residents don't have to use a filter, right. unless they want to, 
uh, I'm going to continue to fight for the water to be made whole. Right. And That's for water credits and for, for water like credits, that. for mm -hmm. lower payments, mm -hmm. anything that has something to do with the resident um, being made whole as far as that water. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Um, and uh, let's talk. We just have a couple minutes before we go to break, so maybe we will have to follow up a little bit on this after the break. But what about crime in the first ward? What would you do to address and reduce crime in, in your neighborhood? I'll definitely start by keeping the trees cut from off the street lights mm -hmm. so the neighbors can watch each other. Mm -hmm. Because those trees are, are hiding out the street lights is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, and, and most definitely keep the the keep street lights lit. lit up. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's, That's another a pretty thing. basic thing. Exactly. Yeah, keeping the grass cut. Yeah. You know, dealing with the blight as far as the abandoned houses, mm -hmm. keeping those things Sure. boarded up making sure that each one on the block knows each other's phone number email making mm -hmm. the neighbors you know get, yeah. getting back together uh yeah. turning the, the hood and back into the neighborhood right you know and and it's like what you were saying earlier together. about the spirit the spirit of the community spirit of the community yeah repairing yeah. rebuilding restoring yeah the physical the mental and the spirit of the ward yeah and if you put give people hope They'll help themselves as long as they know you got their back. Yeah. And I'm definitely one of them. I've been in that ward for 48 years, mm -hmm. and I've been running through those streets and I, all my life, mm -hmm. and I know someone almost on every block mm -hmm. in that ward. Mm -hmm. So, the people know me, and I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. They know it. So, well, a lot to talk about still, but we are going to go to a short break. So everybody, please stay tuned, and we will be back for another for uh, more. Conversation with Mrs. Anita L. Brown. Yes, thank you. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then, so I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, look who's here. Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota va a terminar. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Boom. I'm here with a uh, candidate for the first ward city council seat, Mrs. Anita L. Brown. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Brown, I want to ask you, what do you see as some of the main differences uh, between your the incumbent that you're going up against, Mr. Mays? Um, actually, you know what? This race is not between me and Mr. Mays. Okay. You know, I'm not running against Mr. Mays. I'm running for the position. Mm -hmm. of First Ward City Council. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Mr. Mays has his vision and I have mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that I am the best choice for the um, First Ward. Mm -hmm. um, 
council seat right now at this time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have the courage to change. Mm -hmm. um, I'm willing, I'm humble. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a lot of courage and, and, and strength, understanding, education, determination, self-respect, mm -hmm. respect, professionalism at all times. And, you know, Mr. Mays do his thing his way, and I do mine the way that I've been doing it for the last 20 years in the office of the Ombudsman. Professional, fair, timely, and consistent. Let me ask it this way. Are, are there some things you'd like to see happening in the first ward? Maybe it's, who knows whose fault that is, but that, that, uh, that you're frustrated by currently and what's going on in, in city politics? Yeah, actually, it's the economic development. Okay. It's the job development. Or lack thereof. Lack of. Yeah. Economic development in the first ward, lack of jobs mm -hmm. in the first ward. Um, they're they're coming along with removing the houses as far as the blight go. Sure. I think that that could be increased a little uh -huh. bit or a lot more. Right. You know, um, just the overall makeup of the ward as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that we need to put back regular sweep street sweeping. I believe that we need to do regular ward cleanups. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe getting back. Um, going door to door and talking to the neighbors and mingling in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and finding out, you know, who's doing what on what block and street mm -hmm. on a regular basis mm -hmm. is very important. I believe being seen a lot of the times and not heard mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. because when people see you, they know that you mean business. Mm -hmm. They know that their best interest is at hand when you're walking through the neighbor. I mean, I've been getting a lot of good um, feedback, you know, uh, right. from the residents of that ward because of my track record being in the Ombudsman's office. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to representing the people of the first ward, let's, if they'll have me. And let's talk a little bit more about economic, uh, some of the economic development, job creation. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what are some steps that you would take as city council member to help uh, the ward in that respect? I believe that we need to effectively utilize our incoming revenue stream from our block grant department. Okay. For the city of Flint. You know, the block grant allocations. Mm -hmm. Those dollars need to be expanded through the Economic Development Corporation to assist small businesses. Supplemented and expanded to create jobs through the Michigan Economic and Development Corporation, partnering with different organizations throughout the city, Stride, um, Made Institute. Mm -hmm. um, the jobs have to be quality jobs with a affordable wage, mm -hmm. a quality affordable wage, so people can live and pay their bills. Right. You know, just minimum wage just don't do it anymore. No. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I believe that in, in creating economic development through those departments that I just named, that we can keep the infrastructure through the city government and the budget safe and content. And if we keep the budget balanced, then we can see the governmental and economic um, expansion take place, and that's going to create community growth. Mm -hmm. A balanced budget creates community growth. As my, in my opinion, because when it's unbalanced, then you got dollars that's coming in, going everywhere, right? Except to the people and to the community, where we can continue to uh, to grow. Yeah, uh, let's shift gears, and I want to ask you your thoughts on the Weaver administration thus far. About two years in, halfway in, and she's facing a recall election. Uh, what What are your thoughts? How do you feel like? Um, the mayor's doing thus far? You know, I'll say this like this because the position that I am in with this is that my plans is to work with whatever administration the people choose mm -hmm. to um, run the city. 
I'm looking at the goods and services that I can receive from the administration and council to impact the quality of life for the residents of the first ward. Mm -hmm. You know, the mayor's job, council job, ombudsman job, none of those jobs are easy. Mm -hmm. You know, you just stay consistent with your beliefs and and transparency mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like the people to know about? Something I haven't talked about yet? Well, how I feel about the clerk's office. Okay. I believe that Inez Brown is a professional qualified person. Someone asked me the other day, well, Ms. Brown, do you think that we need to close the, get a new clerk? Mm -hmm. I said, no, the, the one that we have currently is professional. Mm -hmm. You know, and not only has she been a role model for me, but she's been a role model for numerous others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that conversation came up in a couple of, in a council meeting a few weeks ago. You know, and that's just my opinion right. regarding that. Right. But what I would like for the people to know um, as a whole is to be an effective leader in times like this that we find ourselves in the city of Flint. The elected leadership must be a coalition building one that places a very high value on positive fact-finding discussions and not combative. Mm -hmm. socially diverse rhetoric. Right. We have to be a positive role model for our youth in this community because people and businesses around the country are focused in on our city and the region at this point in time. Many outsiders to this community evaluate the city's character and characters of its residents based on physical and verbal actions mm -hmm. of its elected officials. That means that we must do everything that we can to ensure that the elected individuals who exhibit the behaviors we want displayed in front of our families, children, the state, the country, the nation has to be professional and respectful at all times. Mm -hmm. And I believe I'm that person. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, there's, there's quite a culture of divisiveness sometimes, both between elected officials and also, you know, between the public and, and their elected leaders. Uh, it's a very difficult dynamic, but it sounds like getting at that dynamic is very central to the, the kind of role that you'd like to play as a leader. Um, we are about out of time here. Uh, but I thought to close, if you could look directly at the camera, not at me, and just take uh, 60 seconds or so and give the viewers or the listeners at home your pitch on uh, you know, why they should vote for you in a couple of weeks for First Ward City Council. My name is Anita L. Brown. Vote November the 7th for Anita L. Brown, First Ward City Council. I would like to bring the pride back to the First Ward not only to the first word, but to the community as a whole. I am experienced, I am professional, I had nearly 20 years of experience in the office of the ombudsman, working in local city departments, understanding policies and procedures, city ordinance, city charters. I am definitely a person that will fight for fairness of the residents, being understanding, of social and economic development, understanding that the struggle is real for a lot of people in that ward and that some people still today have to make a decision on whether they're going to pay their water bill, get food, mm -hmm. medication, and that's not fair. Mm -hmm. That is the, I am definitely going to be the voice for the people. That's my primary purpose. I am a woman of substance, purpose. I am strong, courageous, committed, and I'm asking for an opportunity to represent you guys in the first war. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much for being here, Mrs. Brown. It's been a pleasure listening to you and talking with you. Thank you. Um, and My pleasure. And that is it for today on Meet the Candidates. Uh, for those of you that can watch videos online, be sure to check out all of the other interviews we've done in this series. We've done, I think, about 15 or 20 interviews with different city council candidates and mayoral candidates uh, for the upcoming November races. Uh, so check those out if you go to YouTube and just look under the Spectacle Productions page. You can find them all there. Uh, get yourself informed, and we will hopefully see you next time. tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. WFOV, Saturdays from 3 until 6, it's me, Dr. Lee Bell, inside the Jazz Jacuzzi. Come on in, the music's just fine. Join me. You've messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got? Or show solidarity? Thank you, babe. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. They say you don't have to be so strong. But this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then. So I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Look who's here. Yeah. Heard about the scarecrow who won an award? He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. is no less than any other family. My heart doesn't, My heart doesn't see race. race. Even love, love is love. love.